So this is the first thing that made me lose my mind in a while. In a positive way about a game. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. Super hype. Because this came out of nowhere. Like, I, I had a conversation, like, I think uh, a month ago, at least a month or two months ago, about with somebody about the series. And they were putting me on to, like, the, the D&D stuff and all the other lore. But I was like, man, it wouldn't be so cool. I, it, would, it would be so cool if there was, like, a newer game, a newer version of it. Because uh, the Masquerade Bloodlines 1, in my opinion, is the best vampire game ever. Um... Not just from the power standpoint, but I'm mean, yeah, but just the societal standpoint, the whole Camarilla thing. I love RPG games, sandbox, uh, open world, all that shit. So that's dope for me. But the fact that they're making a sequel that is going to be on newer consoles is is hype. You know, it's just so dope. Now, I'm not too sure about the story here. I'm assuming he's going to be all the all the power players. I got he's probably Ventrue. Right? It's what the Ventrue is how you say the name. But man, I just there's so much like, I have no idea. All I know is that it's is supposed to take place in Seattle. I'm assuming this is the woman that's talking. Look at this. God, I love this trailer. God, I love it. So, I'm not too sure about what's happening. Yeah, we got till next year. So, we got a lot of time before anything happens. But I'm assuming that that woman is some kind of dormant, uh, super powerful vampire. Uh, I forgot what they're called. But um, I'm assuming that's what she is. And from what I know is that, again, the game took place in Seattle. And something happens where a bunch of people are just sired and become vampires out of nowhere, I think. And as you played the first game, you know, the, uh, the Masquerade, the Camarillo, they don't like that. To the point where they try to kill you. And kill the person who sired you. So, I'm not sure what's going to happen or what. I mean, I read it. I read a little bit about it, but I'm not really sure. I, I'm going to keep myself in the dark about this game, except when it comes to gameplay stuff. But yeah, it's just so cool. This was such a random event, dude. Just such a random... Like, I just, it, it came out of nowhere. For me, at least. I don't, I don't know. It just came out of nowhere for me. So, super hype. What do we? Have? I I really hope that they keep the um, keep the whole open world slash sandbox thing going. Obviously, uh, keep the RPG elements. Uh, you know, if you want to streamline it, go ahead. Uh, I'm not one of these people that think streamlining automatically makes means something is gonna be worse. Like Skyrim stream, streamlining Skyrim's magic, it may. I added mods, <laughs> so immediately I'm going to sound like I'm going to evaluate what I'm about to say. But I added mods to increase, to give me more spells to use, and use like stuff like out of lore stuff that look pretty cool, whatever. But the game doesn't need 15 different classes of magic. It, it combined most of them. Uh, uh, Fudge Muppet, you should go check those guys out. They did a video talking about the streamlining for the game in terms of magic, and how basically they just like they just took multiple schools and combined them into the ones we have now and that makes it a lot less cluttered I've noticed myself all the all the magic I've added due to the mods and everything you don't use there's so many things you're not gonna use right there's just so many spells that you're not gonna use so what's the point of having all of them so many schools oh man this would be really cool for this one opportunity right so I need a whole school for one opportunity to use this thing is, even if you want to base all play style off that stuff, like that's not really necessary. But this game had a had a decent amount of skills, a decent amount of ways to build your character. So keep that. Um, dialogue choices, you know, keep all, don't take out anything. Real, I think the first game is it's not perfect, but it's it's pretty close. It's a great game. There's just stuff, you know, it just needs to be fleshed out, but this is obviously getting, I mean, it's, it's going to be 2020 when it comes out, so, you know, just a bunch of, a bunch of things that you, <laughs> that are common now, will should be in the game, I, I have a good feeling about it, I think it's going to be dope, just keep it like that, 
I mean, you guys let me know in the comments if you disagree with my whole streamlining thing. I'm going to do some more videos talking about gaming mechanics and things like that. But as far as, like, this game, I just... You know, uh, the combat. You can make the... The combat was pretty yeah, drab, obviously. It, it's an, you know, it's an older game. It's going to happen, so... I don't know how they're going to do the combat. But as you can see here, he's using powers. He has some like, little warp thing there. And bit him, sank his teeth into his neck. He uses sledgehammer. So it's basically showing you there. You can use it. You can rely on vampire powers. Or go straight up melee or whatever. Or co a combination of both here. Hey, I got Nosferatu. No, he looks like a, something else. He could be a Nosferatu. They, they look like, like chewed bubblegum though, kind of. So who knows? He didn't like chewed bubblegum. He looked like uh, that Killer Croc from uh, Suicide Squad. He looked like him. Why is he running from vampires? Why is Killer Croc in Seattle running from vampires? I wonder who she is. But I, like I said, I'm going to keep myself completely in the dark for the story. We're going to play through the first game on the channel this month. Oh, it's basically the end of the month, so... Uh, you know, close enough to end of the month. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna play through. We're gonna talk about some more. We're gonna play through it. <sighs> Boy, I am. I'm just so hyped for this. Best vampire game ever. This is the first one. Best vampire game ever. But yeah, well, uh, woo. <sighs> more Camarilla stuff. I'm just, I'm so hype. So excited. So excited. Maybe, uh, maybe an ending where you don't have to die. Maybe something like that. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> I just, this is so. There's there been so many incredible um, Northern American style RPGs, MMOs. They've dominated, right? RPGs and stuff like that. Since the first Mass Effect, the whole Mass Effect series, the whole Dragon Age series, Dragon's Dogma, which is that's not American. That's more JRPG, it's JRPG, it's a little, yeah, a little both. Skyrim, the whole Fallout series, I believe, has happened from from three to four. Yeah, uh, three, there's like three or four Fallout games between before this, the last, uh, yeah, before the first one of this came out. So many great RPG games and series that there are just so many things that can be added and should be added. And I think I'll make a wish list video or something about that later on. I'm gonna play through the I'm gonna play through the first game a bit and then we're gonna talk about it. But yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait. We're gonna be pre ordering a problem too. I might get all three devices. Why? Because I love them. I love them, wanna support them. If there is like an ultimate edition or something, we're doing it. We're doing it. 